Hello everyone. Myself, Mr. F. R. Sayed. I work as an assistant professor in the Department of Computer Science and Engineering at Walchand Institute of Technology, Solapur. The topic for my today's lecture is file inclusion in C language. Uh, meaning, how do you include files in a C program? That concept we are going to see in this lecture. The learning outcome. Now at the end of this session, the students will be able to describe the file inclusion preprocessor directive in C language. Let us first see what is a preprocessor in C language. A preprocessor is actually a program that processes the source program before it is passed to the compiler. The preprocessor commands or the directives that actually form what can almost be considered like a language within C language. We can certainly write some C programs without knowing anything about the preprocessor or the facilities that it provides. And a preprocessor is actually a great convenience that virtually all programmers of C language rely on. It. Now let us see this diagram. In this diagram you can see what are the different phases right from the point where a program has been written up to the point when the program is executed. So as you can see initially there is a handwritten program uh, of course that is being written on a text editor which actually can be called as a C source code. Uh, let us say for example the name of the program is PR1.C. Then comes into picture this preprocessor and this code source code when it is passed to this preprocessor actually uh, generates the expanded source code. We can say the name PR1.I. Then we have the compiler coming into picture which actually converts that code, expanded source code into the object code, of course the file being uh, named as PR1.obj and finally the linker comes into picture and with the help of the linker we get the executable code PR1.exe. So now we have different pre uh, processors to which let us see what are the input and what output does it give. So for an editor what we can say. Uh, what was the input? Uh, the input was a program typed from the keyboard by the user and what output does it generate? It generates a C source code that contains the program and the preprocessor commands. Then we have the preprocessor that takes as input the C source code file and converts it into the source code file with the preprocessing commands that are properly sorted out. Then we have the compiler which takes the source code file with preprocessing commands which are sorted out and it generates a relocatable object code. And finally the linker, it converts the relocatable object code and the standard C library functions into the executable code in the machine language. Let us see these preprocessor directives. The preprocessor offers some features which are called as preprocessor directives. Now each of these directives generally begins with a hash symbol. So the directives can be actually placed anywhere in a program. Those are mostly placed at the beginning of the program. Uh, exactly the point where we can see the first function definition we have just before that. Here uh, the four preprocessor directives that we have listed out. The first one is the file inclusion. Of course where we will make use of a file uh, which will be included in a program generally with the help of hash include preprocessor directive. The second one will be the uh, related to macro expansion. Some macros we make use of. Then we have some conditional compilation preprocessor directives and finally some miscellaneous directives. So today in this lecture we will see the first one, the file inclusion. Now what is this file inclusion? Now this file inclusion will help us to include one file into another one. That means I have written my C program and if suppose I want some of the features of some other program, some functions that have been declared in other program, I want those to be included in my program without writing the code for those functions. So that I can do using file inclusion. Let us move ahead. The preprocessor command generally looks like this as shown below. Hash include and then we write the name of the file. Which we are going to include or whose features we are going to include in our program. So this file inclusion generally causes the entire contents of the file which is of course named with the file name word to be inserted into the source code. And of course this file inclusion generally presumes that the file that is being included is already existing. So only those files we can include. So we have as an example for file inclusion as you can see the program uh, where first of all we have uh, included the header file stdio.h then we have included something new that we are seeing for the first time hash include in double quotes sample.h. 
so the sample dot h will be actually the file that i am trying to include in my program or whose features features meaning the functions and uh, macros i am interested to uh, use in my program so before using those i can include that file and then i can directly use that without writing a code for that separately so then in the main function what i do is i declare two variables b and c c value initialized to 5 and then i am calling a function as fun uh, into bracket the parameter I have passed as C and the value that this fun function will be returning I will be storing in B. So there could be chances that if suppose I don't include this line of sample.h that is I don't include the header file sample.h then probably this line will raise an error meaning that this fun function is undefined is not existing. Now because this sample.h header file I have included in my program so probably what I can say is this fun function may be having its definition in this header file where it is taking one parameter and returning one integer value so with the help of that uh, this program could could compile properly without any errors and then it could run so what output can we expect over here is anything that this fun function could perform as an operation whatever answer it returns that will be stored in b and then that uh, output we are going to see over here with the help of printf statement so for this program uh, there is no output given because i have haven't specified the sample dot header file contents so therefore you can uh, understand that with the help of this i just tried to show how to make use of a function which is not defined in a program but which is defined in some other program and how to uh, use how to include that file in this program so that is what was a simple example of file inclusion now the students are expected to think and write the answer to the following question so now students are expected to find the output to this program so pause the video and write your answer now the output of the program is 7 how did that output uh, as 7 come now, as you can see here when we call the function val by passing the variable s value that is 5 so that 5 was stored in m so when we see in this function val the operation that performed is this one an arithmetic operation where you can see 9 minus 2 multiplied by m now m value passes 5 so 2 into 5 that is 10 so as we can see there will be the precedence of operators rule being applied the operators star and slash will be given first priority so therefore 2 into 5 10 will be evaluated first then 40 divided by 5 8 will be evaluated after we have these two values evaluated then we will perform 9 minus 10 equal to minus 1 plus 8 equal to 7 so therefore you get the output as 7 now the important thing to be understood over here is uh, the way how this header file has been included and how that function has been called it is a similar way as we generally uh, use or we generally call built-in functions by just including a header file at the top so similar to that we have included a header file sample.h okay so now let us discuss on the point as to when and why to use this file inclusion what are the advantage of using uh, this file inclusion or maybe uh, the area or the application uh, where i can make use of this file inclusion how can it benefit me so one of the application that is listed over here is if suppose you have a large program and you need to manage the entire code in a proper way so in that case what you can plan is you can plan uh, for dividing the code into different files now how can this division be done so you can make use of the fact that it will be best to keep the different sections of the program separate and the separate things that we are going to keep we are going to keep in such a way that all the relevant functions or all the functions that are actually doing a particular relevant task that is somewhere, somewhere directly or indirectly related those things can be kept in one file so such kind of files are then included using the hash include preprocessor directive at the beginning of the program so as we have done uh, already so another application could be when some functions and macros are almost needed in every program or majority of the programs make use of some functions and macros and uh, we now see that all the time defining such functions and macros will be actually time consuming as well as will place a burden on the program or of writing the same kind of code again and again so in that case such functions and macros can be written in a separate file and whenever required that file can be included in your program uh, inclusion of that file in your program will just add all the statements of that file to your program so that is how this file inclusion will benefit you so now this generally we make use of the dot h extension to mean that it's a header file and generally the such kind of uh, file inclusion is done at the head of the program at the top of the uh, program code not compulsory but generally uh, we we declare the header files inclusion at the top of the program and the prototypes of the different library functions that we have these are actually grouped into different categories 
and accordingly then stored in some specific header files in which you will find out like for example all the mathematics related functions are kept in the header file math.h and all the standard library functions for input output are kept in the stdio.h header file. So how can we include uh, a file in our program is we have total two ways for including a file in your program. The first one is this way hash include then in the angular brackets you will write down the file name of course it could be an example of stdio.h hash include stdio.h or we may also have in some cases hash include stdlib.h generally these are the header files that are built in. The second way is hash include and in double quotes you will write down the name of the header file that the user has defined like example hash include sample.h which we have already used in the previous program. So now what could be the advantages of using file inclusion? Now the first one is if there are suppose macros and functions which are used repeatedly in your program then it is better to write such functions and macros separately in a program and make a header file. So whenever a programmer requires he will just include the header file in his program and accordingly uh, call those functions to perform his task. Also if suppose there are big projects there the separate related files can be handed over to separate teams and the task related to those files can be assigned to separate team members and accordingly uh, the work can go in parallel. So that is one more advantage of that. The third advantage is it is easy to find bugs then debug and accordingly unit test the project. So file inclusion does help uh, the programmer with this. And finally the source code will look less clumsy and more readable if suppose file inclusion is made use of. Okay, so these are the references for the video lecture. Thank you.